Hello, welcome back everybody. This is Brittany at Big Cat Rescue here still with Jinx, our black leopard. I do not know what happened. We were just in the middle of doing a live and for some reason, Facebook completely said it logged me out and it just ended. So we're back. I don't know what happened. I had to completely sign back into Facebook. So something weird is brewing. So if you missed our other live, hopefully it'll post automatically on our Facebook page. It completely shut down. It logged me out and everything. So I have no idea why that happened, but hopefully that live is still somewhere. <laughs> so I was gonna keep walking for a little bit. Right, bud? I know, you were like, don't leave. Don't leave, we're having fun hangout. Yep, something funky's going on. Facebook completely just ended my live and logged me out all in one fail swoop. So, I don't know what that was about. Uh, Lisa, it's not Jinx's birthday, it's Manny Leopard's birthday. But we were with Jinx when the last one completely shut down. Leah, that is a squirrel yelling behind me from a tree. So we were just live. Um, <laughs> but it got shut down and logged me out. So you might be right, some of the haters that are trolling our lives might have done something, but just do your best to ignore that. You guys are here for the cats, I'm here for the cats. And if anybody truly wants to learn about the cats and how they can help the cats, just focus on them, ignore the hate. Yeah, I had to compl like I had no choice. I was just sitting here talking and my screen went blank and then it said I needed to completely log back into Facebook. So that was weird. But we've successfully bored Jinxie to death, I think. <laughs> Are you going to sleep? I'll leave. So, if you missed it, we already saw the birthday boy, which is Manny, who's 15 now. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't want me to go. Trust me, I never want to go, buddy, but I've got to, I got to do a little bit of a walkabout. I can't call it a walkabout if I just sit here the whole time. So, yep, go ahead and share this and tag your friends again. I'm going to try to do a fairly significant live today because there is a fairly good chance that I might not be able to do some later this week. So tomorrow I have an appointment that will keep me from being here. And then I don't know how I'm going to feel <laughs> after that. So I'm a little iffy as far as Wednesday goes. So hopefully, hopefully all will be good, but. <laughs> all right, too precious. All right, I gotta go, sir. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, back at it. Well, thank you to anybody who donated on the last live feed. Again, I hope it's still out there. It Usually when you close down a live feed, it'll automatically start replaying it for me from the beginning. And then it gives me the option to save it to my phone or to share it and save it and, and things like that and change the caption and whatever else I need to do. And it did none of that. <laughs> my screen went completely blank. And I had to completely log back into Facebook, which I have never, ever, ever had to do. So that was weird. But anyway, we are back. Um, let's walk this way. Just see who's out. It is like, you can like swim through the air. It's so humid. So. Most of the cats are probably relaxing. Just see if anybody's relaxing in plain sight. Looks like Cricket's still up moving. So again, Cricket is gonna get two weeks out here in Funcation. She's been doing really good. She likes sleeping over in this corner. 
Hi, Crux. Meow. Meow. Hi, lady. What you doing? You're enjoying your time out here, aren't ya? Oh. I'm glad you're enjoying your time in Funcation. So again, Cricket Serval out in Funcation, which is a 22,000 square foot enclosure. She'll be out here for two weeks. While she's out here, we'll be able to go into her home enclosure and get it all spruced up for her. Meow. Meow, Cricket. Meow. You're so cute. Thanks, Willie, for the donation. So you guys, again, you can watch Miss Cricket at bigcatcams.com, as well as Jasmine out in our two and a half acre vacation rotation. I talked about all this on part one. <laughs> Was not expecting to do a part two. You see Cricket's curly tail. So Miss Cricket was raised on a vegan diet, which is insane because she is an obligate carnivore. She should only be eating meat. And so unfortunately during her most valuable developmental years, she wasn't getting mother's milk or the proper diet. So unfortunately she's got a lot of crooked and like twisted bones, twisted development. We've got her on a nice pain regimen as well. She gets AM and PM meds for arthritis. Not too long ago, we did an exam on her where we took a lot of x-rays and saw that at, at one point she'd had broken limbs that had been repaired or just healed on their own. So we just try to keep her as comfortable as possible. Yep, she's She's proving that servals are the greatest hunters in the cat world because she was out here for a day and caught a black racer. <laughs> Those are the friendly snakes in Florida. It's just a solid black snake. They do a ton of wonderful things for the environment, but they still scare the crap out of you when they come out of nowhere. But she got herself one. She didn't eat it. She just killed it and played with it because unfortunately that typically is what happens with captive cats. They might still have the instinct to, um, you know, to hunt and stalk and catch and kill, but they don't do it for food. Like they don't do it for survival the way they would have done it in the wild had they been raised by their mama and been able to roam hundreds of square miles a day and find and defend territories and all of that. So that is why we never ever give live prey here at Big Cat Rescue. Um, we do feed out whole prey so that they get the proper vitamins and um, like the roughage and all the things that they need in their system, but we don't give them live prey. We have a bobcat rehab program that we do live prey just to ensure that they can properly hunt for survival. And then once that is something that we know for sure, then they get released back in the wild, but that's native Florida bobcats. A cat like Cricket belongs in Africa, not here in the U.S. in people's homes. So that's what her story was. A privately owned pet with horrible nutrition. Of course, she eats an all raw, raw diet now that she's here, but yeah, she's having a great time. So again, you guys can watch Cricket, bigcatcams.com. Oh, let me zoom out more. There we go. And she's out here for two weeks. So she's got new platforms and toys. Here's her feeding lockouts for the next couple weeks. She actually walked herself here. She's attached to Funcation via an above ground tunnel. So no squeeze cage transport for her. So her story is pretty much basic for all of our servals. I don't know if we'll see anymore. Looks like everybody's tucked away, but figured maybe we'd go check in and see what Flint and Nabisco are doing because they came home last Thursday from their turn in Funcation. 
but every cage that we are currently passing has a serval in it, <laughs> except for this one, because that is Cricket's home enclosure. But they are not super friendly, and they pretty much eat, and then they hiss, and then they go to sleep. See if they're in a cuddle puddle somewhere. We have a Smalls up there in her princess tower. with her little feet dangling out the side. Hi, baby girl. Smalls Bobcat. She is pretty well already into her nap, so we can't, can't disturb that. I don't know if we'll actually see these boys still out or not, but. Flint is up on top of his den or his platform. Oh, there's a biscuit right behind that tree. Hi, bud. That squirrel's yelling at you, huh? This is Nabisco. Hi, cutie. You look full belly sleepy as well. Yep, we are hitting that sweet spot in the morning where this is the time everyone is like totally passed out. But you're out in the open. You didn't tuck yourself away. Nabisco just celebrated his fifth birthday. We have a very elderly population, but we do actually have a handful of cats that are all under the age of 10, which is very young for us. You're so sleepy, I know. Where's your cuddle buddy? Is it too hot? I would think it'd be way too hot. All that fur. Thank you to everybody who's talking about the Big Cat Public Safety Act. Now is the time for you guys to really, really be contacting your representatives, asking them to support the bill. It would effectively help end private ownership and what we believe fuels the issue of having so many cats stuck in captivity is the cub petting industry, all the breeding that takes place just so people can take pictures with exotic animals. It's just a big ego thing. I think it's a lot cooler if you just take a trip to where these cats are native to and pay an amazing local company to take you on a safari. <laughs> Be a responsible tourist, you know? Help somebody else's economy, see these animals in their true wild space. There is absolutely nothing more incredible than that. All right, you guys are very sleepy. I know. Well, let's see. Who else might be around? Miss Ariel's already up on her platform. hard to get a I do want to show you guys this so Ariel is due for vaccines so do you guys see her lockout door see how it's only about three squares high um, the last time Dr. Justin came in and they were trying to catch Ariel so that she could get her vaccines it was a hard pass from Ariel she would not do it she's up there on top of her platform there's not really a good way for me to show her. Let's see if I can back up. And so what Erin and Afton are trying to do in order to catch her is to keep her lockout door 
very low and get her used to like several weeks of going in and eating food with her lockout door that low and that way the next time they want to attempt to catch her because that is the primary reason on why we have these feeding lockouts. So you can see it's just like a rectangular box off the side of the enclosures. And then they have that guillotine door with a rope on it and we can close those doors. So basically she would go in there to eat breakfast and they could close the door and then we could go into the enclosure on the other side with a squeeze cage and we can either get her in the squeeze cage and do the vaccine or if she needs to actually go up to the Winsong Memorial Hospital, which is here on our property, then we can do that too. So we've had to do this with other cats in the past. Generally, this is what operant conditioning is so important for, but there are always certain cats like Ariel that just really outsmart um, the keepers. And so they have not been able to catch her. And what's interesting is I remember like cats like Tiger Lily was also way too smart. Like she just, she just knew, like you could have the same routine every single day, but you must've been giving off some kind of vibe to her where she just all of a sudden that day, she's like, mm -mm, I think you're gonna catch me. And she wouldn't come into lockout. So. What we used to have to do for her is we have this like really extra long rope that actually went completely around the corner so the cat couldn't even see you and <laughs> you'd have to drop the food in and then go away and have somebody in a position where they could see her but she couldn't see them and then you'd give each other a signal and you'd be able to drop the door from like a really far distance <laughs> so these guys are smart, especially these bobcats. So I don't see Gilligan out. Because I was going to go to him after we saw Smalls, but I think he's already in his AC den. You think they just know it is just too hot. I'm kind of just stopping at cats that are actually out. And there's the beach boy, so we'll go to him. <laughs> what you doing, sir? You guys see him? Just doing his morning usual. Beach boy! Well, thank you to anybody who has donated. Thank you guys uh, for everybody who's sharing. It looks like we've been pretty consistent on having over 300 um, viewers today. So thank you for hanging in there with me. Again, this is part two <laughs> of my lives today because I had an unexpected shutdown earlier. So both of these will post automatically at dailybigcat.com on our Facebook page and I'll share them on my public page. I, Cause I get messages every single day being like, did you go live? Where did you, like, where's it at? And I'm like, it's always in those three places. <laughs> like I've started sharing it to my public profile just so I wouldn't have to scroll through like all the other like posts if I need to see like the donate button or comments or any of that. Hi buddy. Meow. Is it time to groom now? So Beecher is actually an F1 Savannah cat. So we saw Cricket earlier, who's an African serval. You can see Beecher has some similarities, but he's actually a man-made hybrid. It's where people will try to breed exotic cats like Savannah cats and Bengal cats and all the different kinds of cats where you have to basically force a wild cat to mate with a domestic cat and you hope they come out looking really exotic but that they have a temperament like a house cat and it's usually the opposite. A lot of times they look kind of plain looking, but they're like super crazy. But Beecher is very exotic looking and was also super crazy attacking family members. They fully declawed him thinking that'd make him nicer. He became a biter. He is much, much happier being outside where people aren't messing with him. Nobody's trying to pet him or touch him. 
So we just do not condone people that want these types of animals as pets. There are so many shelter animals that just need a loving home that it seems crazy to me that people will drop $10,000 and more on an exotic animal. It's just very unfair for those shelter animals. So another cat I really want to see if he is still out is I'd like to spend some time with Running Bear. Oh, we have a missus. Hi, sweetheart. You can see that they built her some new tree platforms. This is Mrs. Claus. She's actually a native Florida bobcat that suffered a lot of neurological damage as a kitten and we brought her here with another male named Mr. Claus and he was a perfect bobcat. His hunting skills were great. He got nice and big. Mrs. here was making friends with her food. We're not totally sure how good her vision is and she's teeny tiny. She's much, much smaller than a lot of our other cats. So unfortunately she was deemed non-releasable, but lucky for her, she hit the lottery as far as being at an accredited sanctuary. So she gets her meal handed to her every day. We don't have to hope that she will be able to go out and hunt because she doesn't need to. She got room service. See, it is full-blown nap time around here. So yeah, they, they built her some new tree platforms there, which is really fun. She likes them. Oh, pretty butterfly. Looks like our bridge troll is out, so we'll go see Simba as well. But I wanted to find Bear, bear. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet because I don't want to scare him. So this is Running Bear. He is in his early 20s and he's a bobcat. And like everybody else, he is fully into nap time. So no zombie bear today. Let me go back this way to see Simba. So Simba is another Savannah cat, same situation, super aggressive to family members, only bonded with one person. Hi, sir. Hi, bye bye. What? What, sir? What? Or something else. Yes, you are. You're something else. I see that paw. Look at that paw. You are something else. You are something else. I just love you. You have such a silly personality. You have such a silly personality. Now you know why he is the bridge troll. You're so silly. Look at that belly. That squished belly. That's such a squished belly. My goodness. My goodness. All right, you have a good day. At least there, you've got a nice breeze up there, don't you? Oh, Bear Bear's awake. 
Where are you going, fella? Back to running bear. Where are you going, my sir? Doesn't he look like a little leopard? He's got like some of the most distinct markings. He might be going for a drink of water. So you'll see he'll be able to walk into his lockout and he actually has multiple water bowls that we've placed on the ground now. If you've ever noticed our enclosures, if you go over and you watch my series of videos that I made that are called home tours, I walk every single enclosure and I still got like a handful that I need to, to get done, but there's been so many cat moves and projects and things that I'm just like, okay, I'm going to wait till I think everybody's kind of settled for a while. But, um, so anyway, we usually elevate their water bowls because cats are prone to peeing in water so that predators can't track them. They'll also dump their water, play in their water, pee in their water, or just like Mrs. Claus is notorious for um, emptying her water bowl, pulling it out of lockout and playing with it. And then it's like, well, then you don't have fresh water. So what we do, as you can see right above Running Bear, um, there is a bowl that's flipped over. Well, there's a little like box up there that has um, a water bowl in it. And we usually elevate the water so they won't do those types of things. And then they'll have fresher water for longer. Um, oh, thank you, Don, for the donation. And so when they get quite elderly like this, they usually have no problem um, drinking out of the elevated bowls. But when they get older, like Running Bear in his early 20s, they're a little less likely to do the peeing and dumping and playing with the bowl. So then we can set them on the ground for them. So he's actually got two water bowls. You just saw him drink out of both of them. <laughs> and then he's actually got another lockout in the other section of his enclosure that also has a water bowl and a lockout, so. Hi, Bear Bear. Did you just now notice me? Bobcats are tough, man. He is, I think now our oldest Bobcat and he will still just tear you up. He will give you all the opinions. These sweet old guys. We all get really, really attached to them. And Running Bear is certainly no different. He's got such a fun personality. He's still very fierce. He's, uh, we always joke that he's the little old man say, yelling, get off my lawn. But yeah, you will give him a spice bag or something really, really cute, like a, you know, enrichment that somebody specially made for him and he will just cuddle it and roll and rub and drool. He's quite a bit of a talker too. Yeah, isn't he so pretty? He's got such amazing markings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hear you, bear. I hear that old bear. <laughs> I love his side eye. He's like, get, get off my lawn, lady. Well, it makes me happy to see him drink so much water as well. The older they get, cats are terrible at keeping themselves hydrated. So the older they get, the more and more important it is for them to stay hydrated for kidney function and Right. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure we're going to run out of cats to see because it is just that hot. So you can go back and rewatch part one and then my phone went blank. <laughs> and now we're on part two and I mentioned that I won't be here to do a live tomorrow and hopefully I'll be feeling okay on Wednesday. Hi, Tut. Here is another Savannah cat. This is King Tut. He looks more like a jungle cat to me, but once again, as I explained earlier or in the earlier live, when you take these kinds of cats in, generally you don't get a lot of information like accurate birth dates, where they actually got the cats for, because a lot of times it's illegal. So, 
This is King Tut. He's definitely a hybrid. He's definitely a wild one. He's got all the traits of a hybrid, an extremely picky eater, very unpredictable attitude. What was that bird? He is absolutely gorgeous though. And look at those pink feet. Look at those pink toesies. My goodness. Oh, tut tut. Tutters. Tutter waters. You're such a good boy. It's my meds night, so I'm going to be seeing you again. Oh. I mentioned in part one, we're a GFAS accredited sanctuary. We're basically a retirement home for abandoned, neglected, and confiscated animals. And a lot of them are quite elderly or have come to us with a lot of health issues or they were declawed or defanged or missing half their teeth or whatever it might be. And so they can never go free. That's just dumb. You're, you just release them to their own death, essentially. It's not safe or legal to do that for them. So their option is to find good accredited sanctuaries. So you guys should always support places that are accredited. And again, ours is the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. And we work with a network called the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. It's a network of sanctuaries that work together to rescue and rehome animals in need. And those sanctuaries don't buy, sell, trade, breed, or touch. So if you're supporting someone on social media and you see them touching and interacting with their animals or allowing the public to touch and interact with the animals, that's stressful and that is not a sanctuary. That is not a good forever home and we just do not condone that type of behavior. It's, it's not in the best interest of the cats. And if they're breeding, they're just breeding for more cats to spend the rest of their lives in cages. So we do not support that as well. And we just really encourage you guys to do some research before you just see a video of some guy petting a lion. Um, it's not cool. It's not as cool as you might think it is when you really learn the dark side of it all. God, always gonna ask yourself, where is that animal gonna end up? And it's just sitting in a cage for the rest of its life so that you could pet it or take a picture with it. So ask questions, find out the stories of those cats and try to find out where they're gonna end up because the public can only interact with animals for about the first 12 weeks of their life. So where are they spending the next 20 years of their life? And we get a lot of people that have done that before. They've done the cub petting, lion petting, supporting the circus, doing all those kinds of things. And we get it, everybody makes mistakes. But when you learn better, you do better. So make sure that you do the research you ask questions, you don't blindly follow the masses. I'm pretty perfection up here. Janet, we do actually hand out a lot of different kinds of enrichment. We do pumpkins, we do watermelons, we've done cantaloupe, we do gourds, we've handed out pineapples, the cats don't eat them, but they play with them, they bat them around, they bite into them, they claw them. We also hand out turkeys and hens for Thanksgiving. We hand out full-sized um, pine trees for Christmas enrichment. And then we have an amazing enrichment group that gets together every single Wednesday night. I think right now they're working on an 80s theme. <laughs> so big cassette tapes and boom boxes and fun stuff like that. So we come up with different themes for the cats. And we do handouts for lots of different holidays, sometimes their birthdays. So this is Perfection. She's a 24 year old ocelot. 
She'll be 25 at the end by the end of this month. And once again, thank you to anybody who donated on our live earlier or this one here. I really appreciate that. Again, we're a nonprofit. So 100% of your donations goes to the care of these cats. Let's go see if maybe Duchess is out and then we'll wrap up with a tiger maybe. I realize Priya is up there too, but that's usually a much slimmer chance <laughs> that we'll see Priya versus Duchess. So let's just walk up here. Hopefully we'll get to see one of them and that's where we'll end for today. So between the two lives today, you guys have seen a good amount of cats. So Duchess and Priya both have access to swim in the lake over here. Uh-oh, it looks like a ghost town. Uh, let me go in down here. I think that might be my best angle. They are also on the explore camera circuit, so you can see them at bigcatcams.com. Duchess is very similar to what we discussed earlier with Nikita and Jasmine, where she has a water bowl that is out here in the open air section. But in order to clean it, we have to make sure she's shifted out of that section. She's up here sleeping in her den though. Hi lady. I don't think we're gonna get a good view of her, but there's a foot. These big concrete dens are amazing because you can see they're full of sand. So the sand will stay nice and cool in there. And it basically helps keep them cool in the summer and actually warm in the winter. So she's got one in her roof section and then this is the other portion of her enclosure. So she's got a big one out there as well. I will walk around the corner and just see if Priya is more visible than Dutch. If not, I think we're just going to be calling it a day. I got to hurry and get out there and take care of the rehab ducks and the bunny that we have. There was a bunny that somebody dropped off. There's a Priya. Hi, lady. Priya's in her den. Grooming. We had a duck that was found in a storm drain and abandoned. Hi, Priya. <laughs> she said, why are you spying on me? <laughs> what? I know, you're being so quiet. What's up with that? And then... So our little duck quackers found in a storm drain and our little bunny boop that was sadly caught by somebody's cat, like a domestic cat. And one of the siblings was killed and little boop survived and ended up at a local animal hospital. <laughs> I know. All right, we'll let you get back to it. Well, thank you again to everybody who joined me on both of our lives. There was a part one and a part two. You guys can watch them at dailybigcat.com or right there on our Facebook page. And hopefully I will see you guys Wednesday. If not, I'm really hoping Thursday. So I hope you guys have a really great week. Thank you for sending all of your love to us here recently. She can't decide what she wants to do. Moo, groom, sleep, <laughs> pounce at me. <laughs> I know. And Priya is just in her den. She has a huge roof section and then she's got over an acre. So all of that area out there with all those trees, she has access to the lake. It's just really gross and hot out, so she's in her nice cool den.
So take care, everybody. I will see you guys again soon.